Hey you! Yes you! Are you a nostalgia freak? Do you yearn for a simpler time? Then the WOC Archive is the place for you. We've got footage from the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. Called from an old tape trader's collection bought off Craigslist, you'll find obscure and lost TV, news, interviews, music, sports, and everything in between. And it's all with original commercials. Every day a new tape, every day a new adventure. Subscribe today to the WOC Archive. Well, they watched in airports, they watched in sports arenas, and they watched in saloons. Nearly 100 million Americans tuned in last night to watch the final episode of Cheers. Hello, hello, welcome everyone. Welcome to the WOC Archive a live stream of Cheers, the final episode, as it was broadcast in 1993. Uh, so this includes a bunch of live throws to the Toronto Sky Dome, uh, the right way of saying that building's name, the Sky Dome. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, it will never be anything but. In Toronto, some 33,000 fans turned out to watch the show in that city's Sky Dome. Uh, this also includes uh, a live special featuring Bob Costas uh, doing like a, a history of Cheers, then the special and then an insane episode of The Tonight Show uh, featuring the entire cast of Cheers who are clearly just totally wasted. Uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so stay tuned for that. Uh, but first, I've brought Adam in, and we're gonna uh, talk would, about beer commercials. Cheers to you! But I'm only cheers. drinking root beer today. Oh well, I mean, I got my I got my six pack ready, so I'm all set. I've been watching Cheers reruns all week in hype for this since Pluto TV has the Cheers channel, um, and started finally playing episodes with Kirstie Alley in it. Rewatching these episodes um, through, a, learned a few things about the show. One the Shelley Long era was extremely toxic and dated, like the, the, the jokes that they would make on that. Speaking of fat, braying asses, you're about to get dumped on yours. Dare you slap me? <laughs> when Rebecca came on, Chrissy Alley's character, they like joked that they were going to just do that all again. And then after a couple episodes, they were like, mm, yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> and they just like, they learned from the mistakes. But uh, the other two things I took away from the show, every time they pour somebody's beer, nobody cared because everyone's beer was half head and half beer. People would take one sip and they would leave with an empty, well, not empty, full on the table. I wonder if it was even actually beer. It probably wasn't. I, I thought I heard at one point that it wasn't, but whatever it is, foams like beer. It's like really foamy piss. So <laughs> <laughs> mm. why I guess I'll keep with my root beer. I mean, that's not that far off. Get out of here. Al, the old guy, who like nobody really remembers from the show unless you'd watched it enough. If you ever watch reruns of it, watch Al. He always looks at the camera. Come on. If you guys are going to stretch things this far, then you could make anything out of those fortunes. So I've just, I start to watch all the background people because there were regulars that were there from like the beginning to the end of like the 10 year run. I stopped, to, stopped paying attention to the show and started paying attention to those faces in the back being like, man, someone was directing them. Someone was saying, this is what you do, but you have to do it silently because otherwise yeah. you're going to overlap to the people. So all the people are pretending yeah. to talk. A hundred percent. Which is so creepy when you all of a sudden become notice, uh, conscious of it. Will you question my figures? No, I want you to get out of here. <laughs> what a, a crazy and again, dated type of sitcom. Like it's, I just don't think it quite translates to today's world. Oh yeah, they couldn't make this today, but that's what makes it so great. And it's like a prototype try. for so many sitcoms. That's the thing. Like there, you, there are shows that would try, but you would know they would halfway through go, wait a minute, this is about being depressive and drunk and making reference to suicide and making re reference to it's alcohol. Just cheers. Beer, but just laughing it off. Yeah. Yeah. Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Um, All I right. Well, you must have some things for me to see. I do. First up from Global News Live. Uh, this is uh, live in front of the Sky Dome just before the show started. Now, joining us live from the Toronto Sky oh, Dome is Global's Rob Davidson, who also happened to be one of the hosts uh, for tonight's big event. Rob, News tracker. Are things are shaping yeah. up down there. Anybody, any early birds? Boy, I'll say, Bob, actually, there's a boat. Uh, well, there's a couple of hundred that have been here since early this afternoon. Whoa, they that started was so in front of the, uh, the Sky Dome. Uh, they've all brought their uh, food donations Dome. for tonight. They've got cans of beans, et cetera, and peanut butter and all this kind of stuff. 
There's also and I, some I, beans. Frankly, uh, you and I were talking about this earlier today. I mean, here are cans. some people cans are who, that's a, a can I guess, don't have a dairy. life, and they're down oh. here. Uh, <laughs> wait, 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 what did you just say? The jumbo drawn. Uh, I got people who don't have a life, so they're okay. here. <laughs> Come on over here. Now, now, where, where are you ladies from? Burlington. Burlington. All right, and why are you here? Oh, go it's ahead. a unique and different experience. So we want to sure. see Norm. You want to see Norm? Yeah. You want to see Norm on a big Who's your favorite character? Let me guess. Norm. Carla. All right, we got another one. Jerry? Jerry, I want you to come on over here. <laughs> come on, Jerry. Jerry. You're from uh, Brantford. Well, Jerry's Brantford. a tall guy. And why are you here? To see Norm. Why? What is it with Norm? What? What is it with Norm? Nor Norm is the greatest low life of them all. <laughs> I mean, all that right. man and, is and Norm and Cliff in one person. Oh, 100%. Like Never. Look at those Never. glasses. Well, enjoy yeah, yourself tonight. You. Karen, come on over here. It just goes on and on and on. Karen, where are you from? Willowdale. All right, well, that's a little closer to home. Now, um, why are you here? I've been a fan since it started, and I thought it would be a great way to end it. And your favorite character? I like them all. They all have good lines. Uh, all right. Yeah. Well, well I live my life. Tonight. I thought this would be a great way to end Cam it. Cam and Mark, what? right? <laughs> all right, now, where are you guys from? Oh, look Niagara at these Falls. hats. Uh, why are you here all the way from Niagara Falls? I uh, just came down to see the Sky Dome, see it on the big screen for last time. What would you be doing tonight in Niagara Falls if you weren't here? We'd be watching Cheers and Seinfeld at home. And who's your favorite character? Norm. Natch. And why is it Norm? Natch. 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 as much beer as I can. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy yourself tonight. And, uh... Get a life, you guys. Well, there we are. <laughs> yeah, Amazing. Gathering, uh, even as we're speaking. Should be a good time tonight. <laughs> Get a life. <laughs> uh, comedy. Uh, another thing about Cheers that um, when looking up stuff about it this week, there was, okay, we all know there was a spinoff with Frasier. Everybody knows that. It was yeah, probably of course. more popular than Cheers was at certain times in its, in its career. In its run, I should guess is the word. But there was a spin-off show that ran for one season simultaneously in the middle of Cheers that was based off Carla's first husband. Uh, my breakfast before lunchtime, if you please. I have to make some more toast, Nikki. I buttered the wrong side. Like a 30-episode season. I can't believe you've never watched that. Yeah. That seems like something that you would have been all over. Oh yeah, completely. Uh, and I bet it was freaking awful. It, it it really looks like it was the prototype for like Married with Children. Yeah, because there was the um, Married with Children, and then the spinoff with Matt LeBlanc that came on after, called Top of the Heap. It only lasted for one season. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go? All right. Well, let's get uh, to uh, uh, beer commercials. Uh, that's why we're here. That's why I got my beer ready. Uh, I so I pulled a bunch beer. of uh, <laughs> yeah, your root beer. I should have put an AW root beer commercial in here. Oh, well. Uh, so I pulled it a bunch of beer commercials from my collection. Uh, and I've cut them together for you all to see. And now from Budweiser, the taste buds. Oh, yeah, who's the guy in this? Wait a minute, you hate yeah, I think the guy in the back, I think that's J.B. Smooth from um, Curb Your Enthusiasm. I love this guy doing the Brando impression. I don't know. Give me a Budweiser. It looks like Jakob Smirnoff and Nick Lothian. Why do you think they call him Yeah, kind of. Anyway. In Russia, Bud's taste you. Oh, this guy. Yeah, Carl from uh, Die Hard. I don't know. Do you really want an international terrorist uh, promoting your uh, your beer brand? I feel like Labatt's was not thinking uh, this through. Uniquely, it's your drink. I'm mixing him up, but I think this movie called Runestone, and he's a demon, and he dresses like that. That like it's not ice beer. Dressed exactly the same way. Sometimes I mix him up with the taste. But he's, he's B movie royalty. Oh, definitely. I just don't. They don't write jingles like this anymore. What year is this? Like 1979? Nickelodeon was a classy beer, too, though. Everything oh, about it, it is like not classy. <laughs> but it, I think it's one of those things where it was like an urban beer, so it tried to like present itself Everybody to not be known as that. Yeah, right. It's like in early ads for Colt 45, how like student high Karen. classy was that? And, and I want to make sure that's a lot of years. Yeah, fair point. Everybody has their own reasons. The brewers of Canada ask you to think about yours. Don't die at your wedding. 
Please drink responsibly. Someone's gonna puke at someone's wedding. Don't worry, Morgan, it won't be me. Yeah, please don't puke at my wedding. I don't want to puke at my wedding either. No, you should. But your best man. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> Alex, your best man, is he gonna puke he at your wedding? Yeah, he should. <laughs> Alex, if you're watching. You can go somewhere out in the garden somewhere, dude. It doesn't have to do in front of her. But it has to happen. Don't forget to replace the light in your refrigerator. So that little man has something okay, to do Okay, here, wait. This is great. It's all right. Don't worry. It was a girl. I love the like. There's so much misogyny in, in beer commercials. It's crazy. And it makes sense. Hard drinking men. So pause that for a second. So I'll talk over your next one because it's involving the moon. But <laughs> but. Um, when that I hadn't seen that commercial before, but when it played and he said that cabbie's just my type, I'm like, he's gonna have to clarify that it was a woman. Like we saw 100%. that it was, but he's gonna have to. In the in the eighties, a guy wouldn't have the bartender would immediately assume it was a man. Yeah, hundred percent. Just because of assumption in the time period. And so I was like, Oh, there he does. There we go. Both those guys look like a cross between um Joe Piscopo and the uh the model from Taxi, the guy who was in Greece and in Taxi. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, this guy looks like Joe Piscopo for sure. Yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> whatever, man. Fuck off, man. <laughs> All right. Now that old let's go to the moon. He's available at beer stores across Ontario. You never know where it'll turn up. Genuine imported old Milwaukee. Mm-mm-mm. Now at the beer old store, Milwaukee. A real down to earth price. Out of this it world. Get any better how, than this. how more American would it have been if? When Neil Armstrong got there, he just opened Good up right. a beer and let it flood well, out. The invite for this uh, cultural bash. Never thought I'd be lucky enough. Remember when Paul Hogan did all these ads? Fosters. Remember when Paul Hogan was everywhere for five oh, minutes? Oh, he was everywhere. A masterpiece. Sorry, mate. Private but collection. these only ran in Canada, so he was so really? popular in Canada that, that they brought him in. How he sees. He I bet he feels. Australians couldn't stand him when he became. Send him oh, well after talking sure. about the they were like, Australians Fosters. can't stand the fucking Fosters. Right, I'm sure. <laughs> Every tourist that ever comes by. This is the epitome of a beer commercial. In oh yeah, this is fake, perfect. It's so dead on. Everyone in this looks like a character from a soap opera. Laker beer not is not this cool. Is it Laker brewed in Hamilton? <laughs> I think it is. Probably. Or this is sorry. <laughs> I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, forget the right. vegetables. Grab your Laker. It's more important. <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that they sell Laker in uh, California either. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everybody has their own reasons for drinking responsibly. Mom and Dad Everyone also so has their own reasons for not. I don't want to do anything to let them down. <laughs> don't want to let my parents down by getting drunk. The Brewers of Canada ask you to I'm going to drink responsibly. Yours. And then this classic. And it's like on the other side of the spectrum. Wild party last night, huh? Oh, so what happened to you? Last I heard, you were headed for some body piercing place. Oh, man, that stuff's too weird for me. Anyway, I'm sure you didn't do anything too stupid. <sighs> hey, yeah, hey, no, cool no, guy. I'd be so mad at myself if I woke Stay up with the, the beach. piercing. And there you go. My friend Josh in college who drunkenly got his nipples pierced and then didn't want to take oh. them out because he was afraid they would scab over and but then was afraid to tell his family because right after college he lived back at home for a year and he was like, I, I can't get changed in front of anyone in my home. I don't want them to know. Oh, that's so, so much sad. So that he, he got, he went on vacation with his dad and he had like a panic attack going into the metal detector because he believed that they would scan him and make him act, show what it was. Josh is not predominantly one of my smarter friends. <laughs> this oh. is dedicated to you, Josh. All right, let's get, uh, let's get to your reel of commercials. Let's see what you've brought. What I'll, I'll find out before mine. 
Um, it's either just because it was the late eighties, early nineties, but light beer commercials had mascots and weird things and wacky characters and, and spokesmen and stuff like that, which as the kind of commercialized sellout weirdo that I am, um, that's really appealed to me no matter what. So when some of these characters that you're about to see caused some controversy, it caused, um, Miller light, Bud light, Coors light, all to one point be sued by parent groups because they assumed by having these personalities, it was trying to relate beer to children. And I don't think it would. And I don't think those cases ever really won, but it did cause one of those mascots to make their commercials always sort of reference drinking more maturely. And you'll see that in this, in this reel. So let's, uh, let's get light on our feet folks by getting drunk. All right. Beer. And of course, light, of course. Gonna be at the silver bullet tonight. You're Irish, you know. Sipping on a cold course light. Are you right? No Irish at all. Uh-uh. Who's gonna come and play? On a course like St. Patrick's Day. Come on, you're Irish. Okay, okay, I'm Irish. That's funny, you don't look Irish. No slowing down with a silver <laughs> bullet tonight. So look for this display with beer wolf. I'm Irish. Wherever you are, Coors and Coors Light beer. Oh. They're ready to try. All you ghouls and goblins gather round. Time for chills and thrills. So party down. No matter who you like to bite, you're gonna want Coors and Coors Light tonight. Coors Light beer will be there. Fun is everywhere. Get ready for excitement oh, yeah, when Coors is on. I the do team. not remember the beer. Anything can happen. <laughs> on a Coors and Coors Light Halloween. So, Halloween, Coors Light. Coors Light connected to Halloween a lot in their commercials, including okay. I, evidently something I can't find a commercial for it, but I did find a standee, which uh, I posted on uh, the Ride of the Movies group there, of uh, Bob Euchre dressed as Dracula for Coors Light. Oh, yeah, right. Okay, I saw that. Um, and, uh, but Beer Wolf was there for a long time, because that started in 86, and the mid-90s when I still probably, I mean, I <laughs> it's definitely someone drinking earlier than I should have. But um, but even earlier than having any interest in beer, I had probably around the time that there was like Barney shirts and like, you know, the color change heat shirts and shit like that of the 90s. One of my favorite T-shirts I had was a Beer Wolf Coors Light Silver Bullet. That's why for a while it was called the Silver Bullet, which is why they had to wear it. Oh, okay. Because um, it's all silver. Oh, I did not know any of this. Yeah, but the the shirt that i had just said silver bullet coors light and had beer wolf on a um like a jet ski sort of thing like he's holding on to like the rails of someone's yeah okay boat and he's surfing in the wind he's got big sunglasses on and like crazy bermuda shorts with <laughs> with like you know some tropical plants on it or something like that and to me that was the co- and he was jacked the drawing <laughs> that was like the coolest jack dude werewolf. ever <laughs> the coolest guy ever the big jack <laughs> werewolf that just wanted to party and unlike really Teen wolf it was just michael j fox with fur on his face he was a real wolf like he was big and claws and all that so he was you know he was that beer bro and then he could probably slash it a bit so it was as a I mean, he's the best bro to have around yeah absolutely and yeah. He probably in the world of like cartoons in my mind he could magically put his hand behind his back and just pull out more beers like he just never run out of them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right but let's go on the other helping men for halloween Coors Light. It's the official beer of Halloween. Amazing. And just what an adult party needs to be a Halloween. So many Coors commercials. Yeah, there's so many Coors commercials. Like a sign from above? But Elvira did like at least like a dozen. This display wherever you buy Coors Light. And it's just perfect for when friends drop in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a pantomime horse showed up. That's awesome. But then to connect her to other beers like root beer. Oh, there we go. I think she just did everything. Because she was doing the course commercials for a while, Mug thought it was funny if they would get her too. Yeah, totally. Oh, hey, it's that guy. It's Michael Barrymore. Can you yeah, yeah. And just someone said, we need a bunch of ghouls. Oh, Michael, you don't need to do anything. Just stand over there. <laughs> oh, poor Michael Barrymore. 
Some of the nicest guys in the business, too, like to a fault. Like, this Halloween, crazy. go psycho with Elvira and win a party with Mug Root Beer and me. Awesome. I love my mug. A party at the Bates Motel at Universal Studios. That's awesome. How cool would that have been? One? That I, would I bet... be an awesome party. I'm so jaded. I feel like it's one of those things where like it never happened. Like you'll never find like, the person. Who <laughs> yeah, there's nobody who took pictures. It never actually existed. Yeah, it'd be kind of cool to go back and like find people who won all of these weird prizes and interview them. Yeah, I know through history though, there's a lot of especially in the 80s, they discovered that people didn't win them, that they were like Interesting. they were live. It was yeah, it was just a, a marketing campaign for nothing. But since the internet, now they can't get away with that, which is why you don't see a lot of those things because yeah, like, that's oh, true. Well, now we have to pay up. But because uh, someone would have fucking posted it on their Instagram if they had the Bates Motel mug root beer party. Oh, 100 <laughs> percent. That would be great for your Insta. All right. I knew he was going to be here. <laughs> this is going to be one. <laughs> Look party. at him play his guitar. Do you know why Spuds McKenzie oh. has so much fun at parties? Because he's adorable he's as fuck. And <laughs> look at how cute he is. He knows how to make the party last. It takes good sense. That's a great a sweater time. too. He's got Spurs great sweater game. By one simple rule. No when to say when. A reminder from Anheuser Busch. <laughs> that was amazing. No oh, and of course. This one I play on all my shows. Mad all Dog Michonne from Montreal. One of the most drunkest wrestlers beer, ever. Canadian beer, imported beer, no oh, water. Yeah, beer. Prices, and they told me that this was a, an easy part-time job. But then I found another I commercial for the same here. place. This was just for one Chicago place. Lake Chicago Lake Liquor is the number one beer store. In they Minneapolis. Buy more, so you oh, across from Sears. Even more on 3K <laughs> yeah. Thanks. No, one, no need Chicago for a number. Just across from Sears. If they all knew where if you know, If you live there, you know. Minneapolis St. Paul, listen up. This oh, is wow. Jesse the Body Venture Jesse the talking body. to you from the Chicago Lake Liquor Store across from Sears in Chicago Minneapolis. Where should you turkeys go to buy your beer? Chicago Lake Liquor Store. You can get the finest in domestic <laughs> beer as well as imported beer. You can Imagine actually being able to hold a full keg like, like that. <laughs> That'd be so <laughs> hard. Chicago Lake Liquor is the number one beer store. They buy more so you buy for less. Save even more on 3K Special. Number one, Chicago Lake Liquor. 3K Special. And oh, then, that was amazing. Jesse moved up in the the years with his uh, his beer commercials, which I'm known for my gentle and charming famous ex wrestler. Oh, is that Nathan Lane? Ran out of yeah. Light. I didn't get mad. Nah. We calmly discussed the situation. I told Ernie I drink light because it's brewed from the ground up, so it tastes evidently light. it's Ernie, not like some watered down. Yeah, well, he, of a he looks like an Ernie. Game. We reached an understanding, yeah. and he quickly rectified the situation. <laughs> Mom always said I had a way with people. <laughs> He's holding him off his feet. When it's not yeah. light, it's amazing. Tastes but it, great. Okay, now, but thing. what do you think's heavier, a uh, full keg of beer or Nathan Lane? <laughs> yeah, I don't he's know, basically doing the same thing in both ads. Yeah, it could be close. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't know. I mean, like, I think Nathan Lane's heavier than a keg of beer, but maybe not. But not by much. If he is, no, but, but not like, by much. Not yeah. by much. Yeah, it's tough. The shoes and the tie may make him a little bit heavier. <laughs> Oh God! I hope he's wearing a cute little sweater. <laughs> got the captain's jacket on. Oh, this would make me want to drink Bud Light. He had the babe. And Robin Lee. Lee, yeah, Robin Lee. Well, if anyone knows famous people. It's Robin Leach. Spud McKenzie gives motion to the ocean. Is what I'm <laughs> at the end. That oh, was that was the, beautiful. Spuds was one of the ones where many parents groups sued because they said it was actually like making children want to drink beer because of those commercials. And uh, I mean, I I don't know if I could argue that. Fair, but there is a long history of uh seemingly children's uh entertainment being used to promote beer in fact i have some I of that say, right do I now sense for a segue here oh i'm doing a segue shortly after man learned how to cultivate grapes he learned how to brew beer cultivate grapes hieroglyphics tell us that yep. as far back as the year 1967 B. it's a long time ago or 1967 years ago <laughs> The man who enjoyed beer then 
drank it for much the same reason as the beer drinker today. And none other than the hey, Flintstones. Hiya, Fred. Hiya, Barney. Hi, Hi Claude. Who Bush coming up? Uh, say, fellas, uh, I've got to run over to Stone City today. Instead so this is from 1967, favor, and it's an entire okay. episode no, of The Flintstones with a full okay, storyline, oh, yeah, sure but will. as an well, Anheuser-Busch uh, advertisement. But I, might not I mean, no one sold out worry, like Hanna Barbera. In yeah, take your time. It's true. Right. But and there's also a little bit of an argument that he was. They were supposed to be. Oh. The honeymooners. So they were supposed to be. Oh, yeah. It's not really really for kids, kids, but it is for kids. Yeah. 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 History makes it for kids because it's a cartoon. But I think even in its early run, I believe it was sort of like a primetime cartoon. Yeah, yeah, it was a primetime show. Yeah. It is weird to look back that it had black and white cigarette commercials, it had a whole special just on Ben Hazard Bush. On Hazard Bush. But this, so this was like made for uh, for resellers. And now through the cooperation of the Neanderthal Broadcasting Company, a special advanced closed circuit program. <laughs> There's those weird Bush videos that a bunch of sitcoms all did about investing in American, like not war bonds, but like bonds, the yeah, I had that too with the, like the three stooges and a bunch of people. But like way later, look at, the, like, look at them. Clyde's dinos. There's, I think there is even a Cheers one. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, wow. I, I, like, like, a lot of the 80s ones did it. That's why it definitely wasn't... It was like during an era where there was no war at all. Interesting. How did we get this? I don't know. Just lucky, I guess, Rip. <laughs> They're starting. Why is that a classic beer or uh, barman's haircut? That. Welcome to a pre I don't know, of 1967 it is. Bush hmm. advertising. Advertising that moves the consumer to Bush. To help you in the selling organization move Bush to the consumer. We call it... Got to move that Bush to the consumer. <laughs> advertising aimed directly at... Well, it was the 60s. Drinkers. There was a lot more Bush back of all beer So they want to market to the 20% that drink 80% of the beer. These are the guys who come from all walks of life. Who face the daily pressures and tensions of their jobs. They need to get These drunk. These guys find the kind of relaxation and release they need in a cold glass of beer. For them, only beer does it. Hey, Fred, sounds like us. Keep quiet, Bonnie, and pour another bush. Bush target advertising <laughs> began last year with the theme, You Can't Say Beer Better Than Bush. We use true. Words you can't. Beer drinkers understood. This voice actor too is a really predominant voice actor. Like I recognize this voice. Oh yeah, he did tons of commercials and stuff back we in the day. Yeah. I, I can't think of what his name is. But... <laughs> Those who know that kind of stuff would we'll, we'll be able to name it right away. Though. To be so successful. Pretty iconic. Not only are we continuing with it, we are strengthening it with another powerful expression. When so there would already be things like Bush Gardens and stuff like that already by this point, though, wouldn't there? Because it was around for now like, to show you what we mean. I think so. Let's take a look at one of our new television commercials. Weird as a Canadian, because we don't really relate with that beer at all. But as an American product, it's like it was everywhere in things that didn't seem to apply to beer. Yeah, totally. Yeah, so this is one of their ads. These poor guys painting and all these women nagging them about how to paint properly. That deserves a bush. What the shit are they doing? <laughs> when you're due for a beer, Bush does it. Because Bush is brewed straight, the way beer was meant to be brewed. By Anheuser-Busch. None of this gay beer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how, beer, how you, you do. brew beer any other when way. When you're due for a beer, Bush does it. Delivers all the satisfaction a cold Bavarian glass beer. beer can give you. Well, you can't say beer. I wonder if they bother saying that anymore. Because again, how American they try to be. But Barry and Beer Gardens, that's <laughs> hey, a lot Fred, of fun to go to those. Sure <laughs> oh, I'm sure. Thirsty. Fill her up. When you're due for a beer, Bush does it. You can't say beer better than Bush. You've seen how these words, along with pictures, I can say beer better television. than Bush. It's not that hard to say. Now you're going to hear how this target advertising works with something. It's even got. It's even as strong as hypnotizing you afterwards. Now you're going to hear imagination. Bush radio commercial. Why do I always do it? 
every day pick the wrong lane. If I were in the other lane, I could be halfway home by now. No, no. If I were it's in a great the graphic. Lane, I wouldn't yeah. be home until tomorrow. Hey, I can't believe it. I'm moving. I moved a whole car length. Oh, well, when I get home... Maybe the hypnotizing's working because I know you can get bush beer here, but it's not a big thing. We don't talk about it much. But if you go to the beer store, you can get it. And now I'm curious to go get it and try. So maybe it's actually working. Because I don't know if I've ever drank one. Yeah, I don't think I've ever had bush either. Bush does it. Delivers all the satisfaction a cold glass of beer can give you. You can't say all the satisfaction. Better than bush. Hey, Fred, that sounds just like the TV commercials. Of course, that's what one of the, the two first presidents principles of advertising. Were good for business for them or bad for business for them? <laughs> Probably yes, radio good. Is another effective way our Depends on the demographic, I story. Spot radio commercials throughout the I don't know anyone who thought W Bush was summertime will step up the pressure was with smart or anything like that. Everyone and even, network yeah, broadcasts. Republicans St. made fun of him. And California Angels baseball games. We know that beer drinkers are sports fans. And radio reaches them with frequency. None of those nerds drink out so beer. Yeah, they're not advertising to the nerds. They're just advertising to the jocks. Yeah. Target advertisement. Only maybe that's not why neither of us know anything Bush about Bush beer. Maybe that's why advertising to the jocks the whole time. We're a bunch of nerds. A hard-hitting appeal aimed directly at the frequent beer drinker. Target advertising. She was holding a USB stick in front of his face. I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> There'll be more coming your way in 1967 to help you sell more Bush. Thanks for watching. And remember, <laughs> yeah. no, no, you do for thank beer, you. Bush does. You're welcome. You can't say beer better than Bush. I can. Beer better than Bush. Beer. Bush. Beer better than Bush. Beer better than Bush. Boy, ain't that the truth. How can they miss with that target advertising? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. There you go. It's the end. It does seem odd to me using cartoon characters to advertise beer, but again, back then they advertised cigarettes uh, uh, all the time too. So it was just yeah. a different time. I maybe I'm my brain is just making me believe this, or and maybe he said sarsaparilla or something like you know cartoon westerns did. But I feel like when at like the Grand Poobah's Lodge, I can visualize Fred and Barney drinking beer. Or like drinking probably. something out of Steins with foam on the top. Yeah, probably. But, you know, as long as they didn't say what it was. <laughs> That's all I have prepared for this evening. So let's get on to the big show. We got a lot coming up. We got uh, The Last Call with Bob Costas. Then we got the finale of Cheers. And then a completely insane episode of The Tonight Show featuring a very drunk cast. So cheers to that. Cheers, Adam. Cheers. He finished your root beer. My root beer. Good only one last thing to say, and that's Norm! Hey, everybody. 